Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. Thanks for joining us. Today we play with a few wires and bits and pieces. Play around with the multimeter and show you guys how to trace some wires. Hope you enjoy, let's get into it. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. So Taj has cleaned up this bracket yesterday. It looks a bit ratty what I'm doing here, but I actually had to make a template up, a bit of a jig. All the two bars around the edges, our bolts are on the offside of center. So it was quite hard to get my alignment right. The old one was on the plate. So I just made a jig up and then I positioned the jig where I wanted it to, and then it's off center, the bolt holes. So this is what I've done, made up a bit of a jig. I templated that off the radar. So, as you can see, there's center here where my finger's pointing, and that's where I've had to drill on the outside of center. So it's quite a hard little drill to get right. Hoping that this all lines up. I went everywhere this morning, and about five shops said, no, you can't find, you won't get stainless steel bolts in Panasco. And I just come across one guy, which is the Yamaha dealer, real little shop down the road, and I sort of thought he might have some bolts. And there was no English, obviously, and I don't speak Spanish. But through Google Maps, he pointed me out like 20 blocks out that way, and I found a guy, and he had so much stainless steel, it wasn't funny. So I was able to get, long story short, I was able to get the bolts. They're a little bit long. They're the right size, and they're a little bit long, so I'll cut them down, and then I'm gonna take this up now and see if the uh, radar unit will fit on top. Like I said, I'll cut these off and we'll see if the radar unit fit. Taj cleaned up all this, it come up pretty nice, and I gave that just a light clean with some spotless stainless cleaner. It's looking good. Well, I've put a bit of my thin pull cord just around it. I'm just gonna wrap a bit of tape around that because I need to keep it really thin, and that pull cord's only like a mil thin, but it's really strong. So that might do, I'll tape that, because if I wrap this thick pull cord around it, it's just not gonna get up there. So I'll put that like that, run some tape over that, and that should go straight up the mast. The radar is sitting in a cradle at the moment. I've just made like a little bungee cord cradle, so it comes up level. And then when it comes up, um, I just pretty much have to bolt it on, and then we'll pull this cord through, and I'll um, put that on and I can deal with the rest of this down here. All right, Lee's going up the mast to put the new radar up, so it's very exciting. The kids are doing most of the work. All I'm gonna do is feed up the cord because I got a bung leg. Yay for mum. As we're minutes away from uh, installing the radar, I've just mounted it on, on our back on our bracket. So that was a little bit challenging in itself. As you can see, there's this tube here and the bolts were offset. So I had to make a bit of a jig up like I showed you earlier. I've mounted that on there. I've made up just a little harness for it. Once I'm up the mast, we're gonna pull this up the mast and it'll just be a matter of bolting this back onto the mast, pulling the cable up through the mast and connecting it onto the radar unit. Hour or so of light we've got left, we're just gonna try and get this up and mounted and that's uh, another job out of the way. He's got his different bosun chair on today. And it's got some nice big bags on the side. He likes both of them. He doesn't like making decisions and choosing one. So, both of them have pros and cons. And I think he explained that last time he went up the mast. nice if this went up smoothly. We are not having much luck. we come to a halt. There must be something in the mast that it's getting stuck on. So Lee's up the mast, I'm down here. Bella's up the base of the mast and we can't seem to move it past where it is. 
and there is a lot to go. So that is annoying. I don't know what we're going to do. If we're going to try and feed it down instead of up, or I don't know. Have to wait to see what the captain wants, but it's about to get dark. Okay, Lee's back up the nice this morning. We are trying to get the radar wire down. We were trying to pull it up. This time we are trying to pull it down. So Lee's trying to feed it from the top of the mast. And hopefully we have more success this way. We did not have any success yesterday. And it's not good because if we can't do this, then the only next option is to take the mizzen down. Come on, baby. Let's get this wire through. Good news, it's out. It's all the way. Yes. The top down was the way to go. I told you Dad that. I asked Dad before, like yesterday, I was like, so are you going to feed it through the top or through the bottom? And I was like, the top, it would just all go down. And it's it easier. makes much more it sense. It makes more sense because like, otherwise you have to pull all that weight of like, when it gets high, it's still like a lot of cord up there. Yeah, we were both confused on why he was trying to push it up. But anyway. Okay, just slow down there for a second. I'm going to look at detaching it Okay, are you happy? It came through. So excited. <laughs> I can feel it. I can feel the vibration down the mask from you. Well, we had one success and one fail. We've got our radar cable in, so I can hook all that up after. But there's two cables that run up the inside or the aft side of the mizzen. And that's for the HF aerial. I have one pull cord that goes through the centre and it comes out. So I can get my aerial up. But there seems to be two, two cables inside the uh, wiring loom that someone's cut. Maybe they couldn't get them out. But where the roller is up on the top... There's two cables going in, it looks like the rollers sort of wore through one cable and then they've run another one, but we can't sort of access it to pull it, so that might be a job when the mast comes down. But for now, we do have a pull cord to the very top, we can get our HF aerial up for the AIS when it comes, and again, that'll be a job for when we recondition the mast. Well, and all we got what we needed done. Lee has nearly got all of these wires, not these ones, but he's still got the whole boat sorted and looking better and knowing where all everything goes. This is the last of it, is it? This is our last little area of just clumps of wires, wires that have no ends, um, wires that were melted. And yeah, I gotta get my head into this and fix up this wiring loom. It's pretty much the ignition loom, alternator, a few temp sensors and all sorts of stuff. And then the spaghetti just gets laid all over the engine. So pretty much I've got to come from the back side of the engine, bring it all around properly. Um, I've joined it all up on a, on a terminal block and just label and just work out what we have and what doesn't need to be here. Like when you've got ends that are just doing nothing and can be live ends, who knows what's going on. But this is pretty much it. I've been behind the panel here. I've cleaned all that up. There's probably only three or four wires that run off, which I'm not sure of where they go. All in all, it's had a good tidy up. So it's still not super pretty, but it's tidy and manageable now. I've got probably one, two, three, four loose wires, which I'm not sure where they run. They may be connected to something, maybe just loose somewhere. May even be loose down the bottom there with that next bunch of wires, but all in all, this has had a good tidy up now. I sort of know what I've got there. Most things, I've been checking everything's fused properly. That's a huge thing, just making sure everything is fused. You've done a great job. And I'll try and dig up the footage of what it looked like beforehand, because it was chaos. Chaos is the best word to describe it. It was absolute chaos. This just needs to be tidied up. And obviously we've come from the, the ground up with the batteries to the Victron gear and all that's top notch yeah so it's pretty much our last little bit of mess and then everything else is just very easily serviceable along the way at least we know what we have once i clean this up it's been a big concern because i'm just not a fan of all this stuff you can have things short out things catch fire melt who knows what's going on there but 
that's today's task is pretty sure it's going to consume a lot of my time pretty much we'll start with just a terminal block and just labeling and getting them all yeah cleaned up it's just one of those slow time consuming jobs that is just pretty important all right well this is what it looks like before see what it looks like after. We've got joins that are sort of join, like this is an absolute mess, you know, stuff's touching and arcing and it's just not cool. Alright, let's get into it. I always get asked how I trace wires, so I'm going to show you guys what I do and how I trace wires. I get a lot of questions like this. For tracing wires, the tool I use is a multimeter these come in various types, you just want to make sure it does work for DC, not just AC. That's another whole thing, there's so many different types you can get, but they're pretty straightforward, most of them. This reads DC, so direct current, which is what our boats are. So what we do is we go over to our ohm setting, it looks like a set of headphones. If you can see that, zoom in properly, it's right there anyway. You go to your ohm setting there, and you should be able to hear that. So what the ohm setting is, it's for measuring resistance on your wires. In our case, we're going to be using it for continuity of our wires. So, example, if we have two wires, or one wire, should I say, and we put one end on here, and the other end on here, we can see that we have continuity through the wire. Therefore, if we had a wire in part A in one room, and then in the other room you weren't sure it was a green wire, but you didn't know if it was the same wire, what I do is I use just a cheap roll of wire. I usually stick the end out there. And this is, this will allow me to run as long as this length of wire is. In this case, a 50 meter spool, so I could test one end of a wire 50 meters away and down to the other end. If you do purchase a multimeter, the most handiest little add-on you can get is these. So instead of using these, which are great, you can go over the back of your panels and you can do what you need to do. They're awesome, but they serve a purpose. But I find it really easy. You can get these off Amazon for a couple of bucks. They're little alligator clips. So therefore, it eliminates the need for someone holding one end and someone holding the other. I can do most stuff on my own really quickly and efficiently. So we'll plug this in. So what I do is I clip one end onto the spool of wire here and then I clip one end onto the wire I want to trace and then there's the other end of the wire and I'll just use this here to touch on the end. So for an example right at the moment, this is why I thought it'd be a good time to show you guys too I've got a wire down here uh, you can just see it's a purple wire and it runs through and it comes out into the aft cabin I'm not sure if it is I'm pretty sure I think it was an old start switch because I've been tidying up all the wiring in the engine bay and trying to eliminate all the bits and pieces that aren't in use so this is a live example I'm going to clip onto the purple line here so I'll put that on the ground now I'll get myself enough cable which there's not a lot because it's just in the aft cabin there and I've also got the other end attached onto that end of the cable so now I can take this loose end wherever I feel that that cable is that I'm hunting down so in this case I'm just going to pop my head into the aft cabin well you can't see it but it's looking at me over here I've got a purple wire and there we have it so that's just how I trace down all the old wires. So if you have purchased an old boat, I can assure you nearly 100% that you will have old wires in your boat, especially if it's had a few owners and owners have changed different items on the boat over the years and haven't removed all the old wires. If it doesn't bother you having a bird's nest of wires on your boat, don't bother. But if you like to eliminate and get rid of most of them so it makes troubleshooting for yourself easier in the future, I'd suggest get yourself a roll of wire multimeter and one thing of all don't forget to get these clips it just it makes life so easy you can just put this down on the ground it makes a noise so you don't need to hold this in your hand you can just run around the boat with the tracer wire and you can trace down any wires you need so i hope that was helpful that's how i do it someone else might do it a different way 
But that's how we do it on Catalpa. If you would like any other how-tos on how I do things, let us know and I'll try and put something together and hopefully it helps you guys out. Well, there you have it. A few hours work in there and we've tidied up yet another little hole on this boat. Put in the little um, block here. Pretty much cleaned out all the wires. As you know how I got rid of those wires I didn't need. There we have it. Take it easy. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and uh, just don't forget, like, subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.